the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, we come to you here from St. Augustine's on this Laetare Sunday, this fourth Sunday of Lent, in very different circumstances, of course. You know well, these days have not been easy, but uh, this morning we have an opportunity to connect point of connection that is a beautiful thing provided by Christ. And so we offer this Mass in solidarity with all of you who are watching at home, uh, gifted by those uh, uh, members of St. Ogg's who are making this possible here in the church. And so let us turn to our Lord now, who pursues us, who loves us, who shows us his mercy. I invite you, uh, whether in body or spirit now, to kneel with us as we call to mind our sins. Thank you. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, 
but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord 
Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have come to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he who had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in a pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. They said to him, Who is he? He said, I do not know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, 
We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he can see now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want me to say it again? Do you want to become his disciples now? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that he had been thrown out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. my friends, uh, before breaking open the Word of God, I first want to pause and just simply say how grateful I am for this chance to connect with all of you. This is no EWTN Mass. This is no Bishop Barron Word on Fire production. This is no Father Mike Schmidt special. Just me, Father Scott, and some faithful here from St. Augustine's. But I'm so grateful. We are so grateful to let this be a point of contact each week. And at some point going forward, perhaps even during some of our weekday Masses as well. I entitled, entitled the cover of my bulletin this week, A Very Long Good Friday, because that's what this has felt like. Like somehow Christ has gone into the tomb early, that we need not wait just through Holy Saturday morning, but three more weeks to experience again his resurrection. And even that Easter Sunday, right, we will need to experience as a physical dis at, at a physical distance. And so it's sad. It's really sad. And I know on this Laetare Sunday I'm supposed to remind you to rejoice and tell you that it's going to be okay. Because that's certainly true. And it will be okay. And I believe that to my bones. But I also need to say that it's okay to be sad. 
Yes, the bishop has very good rationale to suspend masses. And yes, it's going to save many lives. And yes, we ought to be obedient to those directives. But we can agree with all of that and still be very sad. For Christ the priest looks out into the pews and does not see his people. He looks for his bride and she's not there. How could a husband not weep at the, ass, uh, the absence of his own beloved spouse? Or how could a wife not weep at the absence of her husband? So I know it will get better, but I also want you to know that it's okay to grieve this new reality for the next several weeks and even months. And just know that I pray for you each day deeply through the Mass and the Liturgy of the Hours and through my daily rosary. Despite this separation, nothing can stop the grace of God from coming into your life as long as you too remain open to it and remain open to that grace into your real life, not life as we wish it would be. The life where you're anxious about your kids and your grandkids. The life where you're worried about your parents who could get sick where you're stressed out about your job or bills or food or your own mental health. All of these are the real life that the grace of God flows into. We all certainly suffer, but this circumstance really brings to the surface and often in one place so many sufferings at once. Praise God that Christ does not abandon us, Praise God that his word this weekend is a cause for encouragement. Praise God that he brings real, real suffering of real people into an embrace of his glory and of his power. We have an amazing word of God, my friends, this weekend. The story of the man born blind speaks to the trials and the insecurities that our suffering can cause. We so often want to ask the question, why, when we encounter suffering in our lives? Suffering in our personal lives or like this coronavirus global pandemic, uh, suffering on a very global scale. We want to ask the question, why? And yet in this moment, when things are cloudy and numb and not so clear, when we have a bit of blindness about what the next weeks and months will hold, the best question isn't why. But how? The question of how God is going to bring some new grace, right? Break open in some new way in these days. So that's the question I would just invite you to ask. As you look around your homes, as you look out the window, as you long perhaps to back to the normal stages of life, how is Christ going to bring something new? For a moment, I'd just like to pass through the characters we encounter in the gospel this day. First, we see Jesus Christ. And it's he first who recognizes the blind man. For so many people, this was a man easy to walk by, but Christ notices him. And he notices him in his suffering, in his desperation. This man who simply had a cup to shake and simply crying out, mercy for the blind some money for the blind. And because Christ recognizes him, people begin to ask, where is this man from? Why is he in the situation he's in? Is it because of his sin or because of his parents? It's interesting how Jesus is not confined to those categories. He does not answer that question. It's not because of his sin, not because of his parents' sin, but because God wants his glory to be made manifest. And so Jesus is the first one we encounter in this scripture. Next, we ask ourselves, who is this blind man? This man blind from birth who's never seen a sunrise, never seen a sunset, never seen his own face, let alone the face of his mother or his father, of any of his family. No education, no job, no family. It seems his family couldn't care for him and so had to abandon him to the streets. Can we imagine this man's life? Can we find some of our own life, our own desperation, in the life of this blind man? Next, we encounter the Pharisees. 
Now here we find the accusing voices that are so much surrounding us in these days. We hear the chirps from the television, from social media, and often most striking are those voices, those pharisaical voices that can stir in our own hearts. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You should worry about this. Why do you not worry about this more? All these kind of accusing voices can be like Pharisees, accusing us of not doing enough, or not doing it quite rightly. And so we too can find ourselves in this mix. Finally, we can ask ourselves to meditate on the parents of this blind man. Can we imagine the suffering of parents? Of parents who bring into the world a child, perhaps with great disability, with great hurdles. Who of us can't grieve over the, the tragedy of a child who has to overcome so many obstacles? And a parent, right, who really feels so inadequate before such a challenge. And so we too in these days perhaps can enter into the lives of these parents. I'm sure they felt very desperate not knowing what to do. And here they are brought before the, the Pharisees to be accused and to be questioned. For fear of being thrown out of the synagogue, they remain silent. They just point back to their child. But in so many ways, my friends, this ninth chapter of John's Gospel is one for us to embrace in these days. I would just ask you, to walk through each of these biblical characters in this account in which Jesus brings healing. Because it is he the one, he's the one who recognizes first the blind man. He's the one who takes something as gritty and grimy as his own saliva, right? In a time we're not supposed to even get close to one another. Jesus is the one who spits into the ground, makes a paste and smears it into the eyes of this blind man. Jesus is doing something similar in this day. He sends this man off in obedience to wash in the pool. And when that man washes, he sees for the very first time his own reflection, his own face. Can we imagine that moment for him? And can we too bring ourselves to imagine finding ourselves more deeply in these days of Lent? My friends, this is a challenge for each of us. But let us not flee from it. Let us not avoid it. Let us not run from our inadequacies and our insecurities, our anxieties and our fears, but let us press even more into the grace of God made manifest in this time. Lord Jesus, I ask for the grace to see your power in my suffering, your power even in the sufferings of others. Let us not, let us not ask why, but let us ask how. Christ will bring something new, even from this very precarious circumstance. And now we turn to our Heavenly Father with great trust, with great confidence, and so we together pray this act of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great trust in the power and promises of Almighty God, we turn now 
and offer up these prayers of petition. For the Church, her leaders, and all her faithful members, may we turn away from sin and see new life together in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. For those in political leadership, may they hear the cries of the suffering and respond with grace and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who are suffering blindness through prejudice, may God open their eyes and free them from judging others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May those who are suffering from the effects of the coronavirus through illness, loss of job, or mental anxiety, may we always see the richness of God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the personal attentions we hold deep within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Phyllis Gabriel, Martin Sieberman, and John and Clarice Lance, may they enter into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we turn to you in gratitude. Be with us, stay with us, lead and guard and guide us in these days. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord His name. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them, present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim.
and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Augustine and Saint Cloud and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, God, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The joy again to have this opportunity to connect. Uh, let's continue praying for one another, lifting up the whole body of Christ, both throughout the world and especially here at St. Augustine's and over at St. Mary's as well. We'll get through this uh, as one body. And uh, again, just encouraging you to continue checking the website as updates are posted. Uh, keep in mind that confession times really remain in place. Uh, all the confession times uh, except our Saturday evening confessions at St. Mary's have been moved to Sunday from 3 to 5. And our adoration times remain, right, at St. Mary's on Tuesdays uh, and at St. Augustine's here on Thursdays. So just opportunities to come and to pray and to know that daily Mass continues to be offered uh, as it has been uh, up to this point. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.